today we're reviewing a laptop and this particular one is from HP. It's the EliteBook X360 1030 Generation 7. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. There's a couple of things worth mentioning about this laptop initially. It's for general office and mobile users. It's a dual function device. It can function as a tablet and as a traditional laptop. Comes with Windows 10 Pro 64 pre-installed. Processor wise, it has a Intel Core i7 V Pro 10th generation on there. The display is a full HD 1080p IPS screen with anti-glare. The screen itself is touchscreen and size wise, this particular one is 13.3 inches. RAM wise, it has 16 gig of LPDDR4. Graphics are integrated, so it's Intel UHD. Storage on the device is 256 gig PCIe NVMe SSD. Super fast Wi-Fi on this one, so it has Intel Wi-Fi 6. Comes with a rechargeable active pen. And audio wise, it has four premium speakers by Bang & Olsen. Has two user-facing microphones. Ports wise has two USB 3.1 type C with Intel Thunderbolt, enables 40 gigabits per second connection for data and video, which allows for fast data transfers and gives a possibility of 4K video over the connection. And two USB 3.1 Gen 1 charging ports, one HDMI 1.4B connector, one headphone microphone combo, and has Bluetooth 5 built in. Has a fingerprint sensor, and security wise it has sure view, which can reduce other people snooping on you when you're out and about using your laptop. So I'm going to show what you get in the packaging, set this up, test it out in terms of performance, general usage as well. If you want to skip along to more of the relevant bits for yourself, check out the timeline below and you can skip along to the bits you're more interested in. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging, so let me quickly go through them one by one. You get a set of instructions, you get a power cable 80 centimeters in length, you get a USB to Type-C charging cable for the active pen, and that's 50 centimeters in length. You get a power adapter, Type-C connector on there. Cable length on this is 165 centimeters. Nice and compact and can be wound up quite nicely. Cable on here is a fabric-y braided type. Feels really nice. You get an active pen in terms of build quality. Plastic down here, plastic at the top, and aluminum over here has three buttons on there, one at the top, two down here. These buttons can be programmed via software on the laptop. Comes with seven additional nibs. They have slight variances in there and it has a tool for replacing the nib. So it's just a matter of taking it, putting this on and pulling it out and then obviously pushing it back in again. Nice, comfortable feel to this. Next, you've got a laptop, aluminum finish all the way around. You've got some rubber pads here and just below there. You got two speakers here, you got a vent over here, coming around the top, branding around here. The hinges here allow you to open it up and go into tablet mode. So if I now flip it around, you can see here, there you go. Looking at the bezels on the side, very minimal bezels around there. You got the camera over here and two microphone points. And if I bring it back, there you go. Speakers wise, two there as well. And obviously the two at the bottom I've mentioned. Got the function keys here, together with a camera privacy option. Fingerprint reader just over here. USB connection point, headphone jack there. Kensington lock point, and then coming around, nothing more around there. Two Thunderbolt connections there, HDMI connection here, and USB just over here. The laptop itself is really thin and Barely any weight to it, just 1.2 kilos and a really nice premium feel to it. Probably worth highlighting on the left hand side, if you bring the pen in close, it just magnetically sticks onto it. See there, I'll shake the laptop, it doesn't fall off, so it attaches really well onto it. Next just to power it on, so just to highlight, it's probably worth plugging the power in first of all, just to give it its first initial full charge and to turn it on, you've got a power button just over here. So if I press that now. Okay, so it's fresh installation of Windows 10 on here. So let me quickly run through the setup. Now we've come to the sign-in method. You could use the additional ones. So instead of your password, you could use face recognition or a fingerprint. So we'll try for fingerprint. Click setup on that. And now fingerprint readers just over there. I'll just touch it. It's a very light touch, you don't have to press it. Now it's saying try a different angle. 
that saying set up a pin for backup purposes. Now this is the first thing we're being presented with, HP SureClick. So this is protecting your computer from websites infected with malware, ransomware or viruses. So you can activate this, I'll just do that now. You can add HP SureClick secure browser to your start menu and allow HP to collect threat and diagnostic data. So that's unticked for now, so I'll leave it like that and we'll just click activate HP SureClick. Yes to that and there you go, as quick as that to get that activated, close to that. And that's it, you're up and running now with this. For our first test, we're gonna boot up the laptop, sign in with the fingerprint reader, open up a web browser, go to any web page, and just see how long it takes from start to finish to do that. So I've got my stopwatch here, and let's start now. There you go, 21 seconds, pretty good. And even fingerprint wise, just hitting the button or you can lightly press it and it goes straight in. Obviously, with fingerprint readers, you've gotta hit all the angles when you're setting it up just to ensure it does go in. Sometimes you may get into situations where it doesn't recognize it only because you haven't covered all the areas on your finger, simple as that. But initial performance is good in terms of startup and going into a web browser. Now the laptop itself is a very compact laptop and obviously in size, as you're working on there, you've got the area here to rest the palms as you're typing away. It's not too bad, obviously it's a firm surface like any other laptop. The keyboard itself is a membrane keyboard, feels nice and comfortable as you're typing and you can hear for yourself noise levels from there it's a very minimal the keyboard itself is a backlit keyboard so if i press the f9 button here you can see the light come on that's the first level second and it's off now coming in close just to show there you go nice and clear brightness levels are good and let's adjust that brightness again that's a dimmer one and there you go, you can see there, all the keys are lit up except the fingerprint reader. Trackpad wise, it's nice and large area to work with and a nice smooth feel as you're working on there. There's no indicators on left and right. Obviously you'd go 50% either way. So this would be obviously a left click. You come on this side, get your right click. Next thing worth mentioning are the speakers on the device. So we've got one over here, another one there, and then two underneath as you can see. Now the lower two speakers, Bass seems to come out of these a bit more and the two up here seem to be more mid-range and treble. Sound quality wise, it's pretty good. Obviously it's a compact device, you're not gonna get the deepest bass on there, but levels you're getting are reasonable. And for such a compact device, quality isn't too bad actually. So now I've got my sound level meter here. Let's move the laptop back so it's a bit of a distance away and we'll measure the sound output on here. So I've got the volume on maximum on the laptop now. We'll just check it over here as well. That's on maximum. And I've got a track here ready to play. Let's go. Eighty-five decibels from there, not too bad. From a device of this sort of size, it's good actually having some additional speakers, just giving that extra bit of sound coming out, which you wouldn't normally get from such a small device. Now in terms of display, this is a 13.3 inch monitor, full HD to 1080p on this one. Refresh rate is 60 Hertz, and it's a matte finish, so anti-glare finish on that. So I've got lights, both directions over here and just to give you an idea you can see the light reflecting on there but as you point up to yourself picture clarity wise is very good on there now being an IPS panel the field of view at the side is generally larger than you'd get on a LED display so if I turn it just to give you an idea you can see there field of vision is quite high. You can see even from this angle, you can see things pretty clear on there. And obviously on the other side, still gonna be the same. Not really majorly relevant on a laptop, only if you're working with other people and they're looking at the side, then obviously they have a good view. They don't have to sit directly in front of it. Now, an interesting feature they've got on here for privacy terms 
is the HP SureView. This is the integrated privacy screen. So coming on the function key here, we've got F2. So if I press that, you see the display dims down slightly. Now, if I come sideways, you see literally you can't see anything now. So an interesting option to have, I've not seen this on other laptops, but if you're out and about and you were concerned about privacy, maybe someone sitting next to you, seeing what you've got on the display, this is a good way of masking it out to quite a large extent. So if I press it now, you see, it just appears now. So what it does, it sort of dims it down slightly and it doesn't give them the larger field of view on there. So people at the side, they're not gonna see much. So if I turn it on again, you can see the difference straight away. So an impressive option to have. And that's always a concern when you're out and about, say in a coffee shop or even on a train, then if you're sitting next to someone, they could just be snooping, just seeing what you're up to. A lot of the time, if you've got confidential documents, you don't want them to see what you're doing. So there you go. Now, this also has a brightness level as well. So if I turn it on, and I take the brightness right down to the lowest value, and that's the brightness at the maximum value. Now turning the display front on now, and that's with the HP Shore View on. So if I turn it off now, you see the brightness level there. One thing to keep in mind, if you were after a 4K display, this could be a bit of a deal breaker for you. Obviously it only goes up to 1080p, so full HD. Like with many laptops, you've got the function keys over here, so shortcuts to do some additional options. So this one here is to do with the display. So you can use a secondary display or use a secondary as your main display. Then you've got the HP Shore View. This is the privacy option I've already mentioned. Decrease brightness of the screen, increase brightness of the screen, mute the volume, decrease volume, increase volume, mute the microphone, keyboard illumination there, airplane mode. And this is an interesting one here. HP programmable key. So you could start up this, if I press it now, start off an application where you can actually program what you want to happen. So when you press the key, you could have an application launch, go into a website or even open a file for you. Then you've got your privacy option for the camera. So you can turn the camera off. Next we have the webcam to show. So the camera's just in this location and it's quite interesting how they have a privacy option. So I've pressed the privacy button already and when you press it, a light comes on obviously to indicate that it's on. And now when it's on, it sort of just covers up the camera over there, which is a good option to have. So you know it's not being turned on by another malicious app or if someone's taking control of your PC for instance and they've done that. So now if I press that, there you go cameras revealed the other side now just coming over here cameras just there and what i'll do i'll overlay the video that's being recorded here so you can see what the picture quality is like but the camera itself on here it's a 0.9 megapixel camera can go to a maximum resolution of 720p at 30 frames per second so not the highest quality but one thing i have found it's got an excellent microphone on here so two mics in these two locations over here and you can hear for yourself how good it really is now i'm at my console gaming setup just over here and just to show you can wirelessly connect to displays as well so on the device itself if i go to bluetooth and other devices add bluetooth or other device select that wireless display or dock i'll select that let's give it a moment it's picked up the tv over here you can just see it about to share in the corner and there you go so wirelessly connected via Wi-Fi on this and performance wise, you can see for yourself, it's duplicating the monitor. Performance seems good on there. And if I reduce this, go into display settings and instead of duplicate these displays, I'll select extend these displays. Keep settings and there you go. You've got dual screen now. So obviously your main display is here and you've got extension on the side there. So you can just move windows over and just to show that concept, got a window here. I bring across, there you go. How cool is that, wirelessly done? If I hit play on the video here, and I increase volume, and now sound wise, if I press play, the sound's coming out of the TV on there. So how cool is that? Now when you connect wirelessly, one thing to note is the display can be taken up to 4K. So 38, 40 by 21, 60, and refresh wise, the maximum you'll get is 30 Hertz on there. Next, just to demonstrate extending the display using a HDMI cable. So it's nice that the device does come with an inbuilt HDMI connector. Just plug in the cable there. There you go, HDMI 4, I can see in the corner. 
says it's available. And now if I extend this display, we can see what maximum resolution we can take it up to. So resolution wise, maximum with the cable in, you can take it to 4096 by 2160. Let's click on that. And at that highest resolution, let's see the refresh rate. We're getting 30 Hertz on there. And now taking it down to 3840 by 2160, it's a 4K, keep those settings. Maximum refresh with the cable plugged in also is 30 Hertz as well. So it's nice having that extra functionality, the fact you can wirelessly connect it or even having that HDMI cable to plug in a secondary monitor or even plug in it into your TV as you see. The laptop does have Bluetooth 5 built in so you can pair up Bluetooth devices. So I've got my Bluetooth speaker here, I've paired that up and just to show as a demonstration, play a video and the sound's coming from here. So in terms of pairing up devices, you can pair up headphones for example, Bluetooth keyboards, any Bluetooth device. So it's nice that it's got that facility built into it. The laptop comes with a Bluetooth pen, so obviously that connects to the device and you can do additional things with it. So in terms of functionality, it has a button at the top and two at the bottom. The top button has three modes, a single press, double press and a long press. So you can program it to do what you want. So for instance, launching applications with it. So at the moment, I've set single press to be just notepad. So it'll start up notepad, double click, does snip and sketch. So it'll take a screenshot and then you could just take the pen and just write on top of it and save it away if you wanted. It's touch screen as well, just a note. So obviously you're not limited to just using the pen with this and the buttons at the bottom can be programmed as well. Some nice functionality. So you've got the standard traditional way of working, laptop mode, and you can flip it around and go into a tablet mode. You can get a warning over here just telling you that it's switched to tablet mode. And what happens then is the keyboard at the back gets disabled. So whatever you press on the back, nothing happens. And if we minimize that. Now, just to show the tablet mode in action. So I've got notepad open here. We've turned on palm rejection. So that's where when you lean on the screen with your palm on there, it doesn't perform any action. So the main thing is it works off the pen movement. So now I've got a box here open and if I now write in there, you can see there the test of the pen and now you've got to write it fairly neat for it to interpret what you're writing. If you're really messy, it will struggle and you might get other words appearing. But in terms of functionality, it's pretty cool. Obviously you can write away. So if you weren't one that liked typing, it will just translate what you've written out there. So good functionality and very useful to have this available. You go to a web browser, for instance. Responsiveness does feel good on there. If I go there, for instance, and go to YouTube, I can obviously just type with my finger as well, which is nice. There you go, go into YouTube and there you go. Just pause it for a moment, let's go down, click on there and obviously navigate yourself around. Nicer experience actually having a laptop which is touchscreen as well. Having a mobile which is touchscreen, obviously tablets as well. I think this is the next level here. Obviously it's good to have the touchscreenness. So even if you're in standard mode, if I flip it back again and you're just typing away, for instance, and just navigating again, You're not messing around with the trackpad or anything. Just enhances the whole experience as you're working along, just makes it more user friendly, really. Also worth mentioning with the pen, you can double up doing other things. So if you had PowerPoint, for instance, you can get it flipping slides as well. So a nice bit of functionality from this In fact, you're not just limited to just writing with it or even selecting things, you can use it to do other things on there. And I like the fact the buttons can be programmed to do what you want it to do. Next, just to show performance in terms of video editing. So I've got a 4K project here. The files have been copied locally onto the computer and the video editor I've got is Cyberlink PowerDirector 17. You can see already it's appeared with all the sound waves there. And if I hit play on here, it doesn't struggle in any way. And if I just skip along in the project, performance is good. So in terms of 
using this just for video editing, I think it's more than sufficient. Wouldn't struggle, obviously ample RAM in there and an i7 processor in this particular one. Next, let's test out rendering a video here on PowerDirector. So this particular project is three minutes, 45 seconds long. I've set it up to be a 4K 25 per second output on this one. I've selected fast video rendering technology and let's hit start on here and see how long it takes. There you go, it's completed and it took six minutes, 48 seconds. So there you go, it's not too bad in terms of performance, not blindingly fast in any way. So obviously that's because it's an onboard graphics card, but you've seen for yourself, performance wise, you can edit a video, it doesn't struggle in any way. So if you're on the go and you were planning to edit videos and you were a YouTuber or a vlogger, this isn't actually too bad. And the nicety about this one is the fact it's nice and compact. Just to demonstrate Wi-Fi performance on here and it's got a Wi-Fi 6 adapter built into it. So performance wise, it should be pretty good. And I've got a 1.3 gig file on my NAS server. And if I copy that across now, just to show the speeds you're gonna achieve. So it's gonna take about a minute and 45 seconds to bring across. Speed wise, we're seeing 12.1 megabytes per second. So not too bad in terms of performance. Obviously the device doesn't have an ethernet adapter and that's probably more to do with the size of it, nice and compact, hence why there's only so much you can pack into these devices without going slightly bigger in size. And there you go, performance wise, pretty stable and brought the file across in just under two minutes. Next, just to test performance, playing a 4K video file. So this is actually running locally, 4K, 30 frames per second on this one. See for yourself, works perfectly fine, no issues there at all. Next, just streaming a YouTube video on here. And in terms of performance, it's fine. No surprise there at all. See for yourself, no buffering at all. And this is obviously running off the Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so you've seen this HP EliteBook X360 1030 put to its paces. A great small factor laptop here, dual purpose. So obviously you've got the traditional laptop paired up with the tablet mode on there. I think that's a great combination to have. So the best of both worlds with this. So if you wanted to flip over and go to tablet mode, that's possible. It's nice to get this Bluetooth pen with it as well and provide some additional functionality with the device itself. So interesting how it's got the additional options to allow you to quickly launch applications or flip between different options. It's a nice bit of functionality there. Performance wise, CPU is great on here. So for general office use, it's ideal and ample memory when you're multitasking with this. Webcam really impressed me. Obviously, pixel wise, it's a low pixel camera, but sound quality was really good. So if you're using it for office use, you know, doing Zoom calls, sound quality will be really good on this. General performance in terms of word processing was good on here, even capable of doing 4K video editing. It's nice, it even has a built-in HDMI port, so you can go dual screen with this. Not necessarily just on a monitor, you can actually connect it straight up to a TV as well. So for instance, if you had a YouTube video you wanted to watch, you could view it straight onto your TV, leave the laptop free to carry on working. Standard Windows functionality on here, so you can connect to a wireless display, which I've shown. Sound quality isn't too bad, considering it's such a small device, and it's got the Bang & Olsen speakers on here. Keyboard has a nice, comfortable feel to it, and the trackpad is nice and responsive. I like the fact the device comes with USB type C Thunderbolt connections on there. So a lot of devices out there can make use of the extra bandwidth provided by these. So if you are looking for laptops, it's always a good idea to pick one with a Thunderbolt connection on there. And this one has two. On the negative side, I guess it doesn't have an ethernet port, but you can buy external cards to connect to provide that fast gigabit connectivity if you wanted that. But on the plus side, the fact it comes with a Wi-Fi 6 adapter built in, and if you had a Wi-Fi 6 router at home, you're gonna get pretty good performance regardless. Screen quality is really good, and I like their SureView technology to give you that extra privacy if you're out and about. 
Display is 1080p. If you are looking for a 4K display, this could be a bit of a deal breaker. But there you go. Hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Really impressive bit of kit in a really small form factor. Details, including purchasing links, are in the description below. Hang around for the end cards. I'll have some more cool tech. Drop me a like if you've liked this video and a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.